algae is green, plentiful, and oh, so slimy. But the stuff, otherwise known as pond scum, could one day help fuel the U.S. economy. Our algae are growing attached to screens. We turn the water off and it's very easy to manipulate them. So we're really hoping that, uh, that our system can produce fuel sustainably. In a rural area just outside Washington, D.C., Patrick Kangas of the University of Maryland has set up an algae farm, originally intended as a research facility for cleaning farm water runoff. Kangas says the technology was invented by a scientist who was studying coral reef algae. And uh, then he realized that this system that he was studying could actually be uh, put into an engineered design and used to uh, drive the process of taking up nutrients, which the algae do naturally. In the past, there was no, um, uh, no real purpose that we could use that algae for, and uh, now we're starting to see markets emerge, and it's, a, it's very exciting to think that we can actually use that algae as a byproduct uh, to do some useful things. Fuel is just one of those useful things, and San Francisco-based Silvazyme is already producing it. We do have a very, very powerful technology because it's a renewable oil production technology, and our entire planet is built to run on oil. So producing low-carbon renewable oils means that you can fit into the pre-existing infrastructure at every important juncture, which means that it works as things stand today. Jonathan Wolfson is a founder and CEO of Solazyme, which counts the U.S. Navy as one of its customers. We make oils that go into cosmetics, we make oils that go into nutritional products, and we make oils that go into personal care and chemical applications, and finally, we make oil that goes into fuel. The United States consumes about 20 million barrels of oil a day. Can U.S. consumers, or the world for that matter, eventually come to rely on algae as an energy source? Jamie Hestigan is a professor in the Department of Chemical Engineering at the University of Arkansas. He spoke to us by Skype. The growing of the algae, the, the way that Patrick does it, is probably about the most low-tech way of growing algae. And the nice part about low-tech is it's, it's easy to handle. And so, I mean, we could envision a process where a bunch of these different farms in a region where a truck picked up the algae once a week, brought it to some central facility where you made biodiesel, and yeah, it could add to the amount of fuel that is being produced in this country. Solazyme, on the other hand, begins its algae production in a vial. And Jonathan Wolfson says they have decades worth of store from what they call seed vials. But no matter how the algae is grown or collected, Turning it into fuel is a bit like making beer. We use a technology, a very, very old technology called fermentation, which means that we take big tanks. Today, those tanks are stainless steel. In the past, they could have been made out of anything. And we put a, a single-celled organism inside those tanks, and we feed that single-celled organism carbohydrates. The end result can be oil or another type of fuel. I mean, you can make algae into multiple products. I mean, we're looking at making algae into butanol or algae into biodiesel. You can also make algae into ethanol. Um, the waste left over can be used in, in fertilizer. Jamie Hestigan also notes that algae, and the way Patrick Kangas is growing it, can actually help clean up waterways since algae thrives on nutrients that are bad for rivers and streams. Commercially, algae biofuel could be available to the general public within the next five years. I'm VOA's Rebecca Ward for Going Green.